Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second shelf and to another book haul, the July book haul. There's a book haul every month, and this one is a bit bigger than my usual book haul uh, because um, there in July, my birthday is in July, a week ago. Thank you all for your birthday wishes, by the way, and the fabulous videos that Heidi, Doris, and Sean made, and Kim, uh, for my birthday. That was really, really touching. I loved it. Um, and of course, I bought books for my birthday. I People who know me well and dare, they give me books, like Sean, thank you very much, but most people just give me vouchers. And that's that's perfectly fine, because I love to browse for books and look for books and, you know, choose books by myself. So this is a batch of books that I bought um, thanks to vouchers given to me by my friends. Uh, the first one um, is, it's and it's quite an eclectic mix, <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, the first one is a nonfiction and a heavy one at that, a new release by Olivia Lang, Everybody. Um, a book about freedom. Um, the book was published, I think, two or three months ago. Um, and Olivia Lang, I loved her uh, ruminations about loneliness, Lonely City. I did not get along that well uh, with her novel, Crudo. I mean, not that I hated it or anything, but it was just not quite my thing, this kind of autofiction. Uh, but her nonfiction um, is normally really, really uh, resonating with me. And this one is uh, about the body, every body, um, and the history of the, the, the how we look at our bodies and how the body the freedom of the body. Th that's what I understood. I haven't read it yet, but I'm really, really very much looking forward to, to this one. And I'm going to put it down now because it's heavy. And I'm not going to say I'm looking forward to this one from now on, because of course I'm looking forward to each and every one. Otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. Put this down. now. Um, the next one is uh, Fantasy. And that is Octavia Butler, Wild Seed. Um, and I forgot the publication date in 1918, 19, not 1918, 1980. Um, Octavia Butler, uh, I guess most of you know, um, she was a black American sci-fi and fantasy writer. And I sort of, yeah, um, um, oftentimes I like the idea of her books more than I like her books, but I'm not willing yet, um, you, you know, to not read any of her books. I really, really loved uh, the Xenogenesis series, especially the first book, Dawn. Didn't get along with Kindred. Uh, didn't get along with the Parable of, uh, of Sawyer uh, a series that well. Um, but this one... First of all, look at the cover. I mean, I think it's fantastic. And I wanted to give it a try because it sounded fascinating. There are two very old spirits. You have Doro, a male uh, a spirit, a thousand years old, quite um, vicious character. Um, and you have a shapeshifter, female shapeshifter, 300 years old. And she is, um, you know, the good, the good one. And they meet. And then, um, we start in Africa during the slave trades. And then we go to the United States, as far as I understood. And then the, the clash of these two characters is what drives the story. And it sounded, really promising. And like I said, I wanted to try at least one more uh, series, or at least the, the first book of a series uh, by Octavia Butler before I, you know, give up and just think the Genesis series, that's for me, and the rest is just not for me. Um, the next one is a modern classic, um, Elizabeth uh, van Einem. Vera, published in 1921. Um, and I read this book must be 40 years ago uh, or even longer um, because it was in my mother's bookcase but in a German translation and I thought it was a German writer because the name Elisabeth von Arnim is really German and she has German ancestors and they are part of the family who is indeed German and you know works in German but she is a British writer so the the original I've never read the original. Uh, Vera is in fact, um, a, a 1920s version, so the earlier version of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. 
Um, it's the, the two people meeting, uh, Lucy and Everard, and then there is Everard's first wife, uh, Vera. Vera. Um, we don't know quite what happened to her. Um, there, there is the, the loom, looming figure in, in the window. And the book then explores, you know, what what happens. It's it's quite dark, uh, as far as I remember. Um, but I'm like I said, I've never read it in English, so I'm really curious how my experience and the memories of the books that the memories that I have of the book how that will change when I when I read it in English. Next up is Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown first published uh, in the early 1970s and 1973 or something um, and it's considered um, a lesbian coming of age modern classic. Uh, we follow a character Molly uh, uh, who is on high school and then college film school um, discovering her, her lesbian sexuality. Uh, I have never read any Rita Mae Brown. Yes, hit me. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but she, she was born in 1944 um, and I for some reason, I knew her only because of her series of, of sort of cozy mysteries with the cat and a dog, uh, the Mrs. Murphy mysteries or something, Mrs. Murphy being a cat. And I never explored further. <laughs> but that was really stupid because she is also a prolific feminist um, and LGBTQ plus rights um, uh, uh, author and this is her debut novel and it made an impact so I thought I finally have to buy me some Rita Mae Brown. Um, I'm especially interested if you have read this uh, let me know and I've learned that Ruby Fruit Jungle is the term that is used in the novel for the female genitals. So there you go. Um, next up is a translated fiction, uh, Yuku Yuko Tsushima, Territory of Light, uh, translated from the Japanese by Geraldine Harcourt. Um, this is a, a slim little novella um, about a woman just separated from her husband, um, a single mother. Um, and I read um, a, a other, a, a, another book by the same author with a sort of similar um, subject about the female life. Um, uh, and the title of which completely escapes me now. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me look that up. Um, of course, yes, Child of Fortune. Sorry, brain fart. Uh, Child of Fortune. And I think I read it last year and I really enjoyed it. So I thought I'm going to read more. Uh, I want to read more by this author who seems to be one of a uh, really eminent uh, contemporary uh, Japanese author. Um, and Women in Translation Month is coming up in August. So this is, I have, I'm going to say it right now, this is the only work of translated fiction in the whole book hall. But I have quite some um, unread uh, translated uh, fiction works by uh, f women on my stack. So I thought one, one is enough. And then bloody read what you have in August. Um, next up is again uh, non-fiction and that is Deborah Levy's third and final part of her uh, working uh, autobiography, Real Estate, published I think a month ago or something. I read um, um, the, the first two and I'm looking at them you can't see it, but they are right there. Uh, things I don't want to talk about and the cost of living. And I love them. I thought they were brilliant. So I couldn't really wait <laughs> um, that the third and final part uh, came out. Um, and it is, as I understood, it is uh, centering around um, houses, home, real estate obviously but not in the in the sense of a you know a, a real estate agent kind of thing but of the, the women's life and to find a home um yeah I, I mean not that I really care <laughs> um I care what it is about that's not the right way of putting it but I would have bought it no matter what uh, because the first two I loved so much so this is Unfortunately, the last one, but there you go. Next up is a book by an author that I haven't read enough either. 
haven't read enough from either. Anyway, and that's Flannery O'Connor, born in 1925. And I've only read a couple of books, so I bought her first novel now, uh, Wise Blood, um, because I uh, decided to make Flannery O'Connor my new author, Spotlight author. If you remember in 2020, um, uh, it was Louise Edrick, and together with Terry from um, uh, Miss Terry B, um, I read all of Louise Edrick's novels in chronological order, 16 of them. And I finished, uh, we finished in April of this year, and I didn't have another author spotlight author in mind and when I looked through books to buy for my birthday I thought Flannery O'Connor. I've read a couple of her short stories but that's basically it and I never read her two novels. Um, she was not as prolific um, as Louise Edrick because she died early um, but it's already July so there's a, a complete a collection of her complete stories, which is quite uh, a big collection, and two uh, novels. And I will start with her debut novel, Wise Blood. Um, and again, I forgot when this was first published, 1952. Okay, and it's about a man, uh, Hazel, what's his name? Hazel, uh, yeah, Hazel, a 22-year-old man who is just not making it. Um, he falls uh, with the wrong people and he falls for a preacher. I mean, falls for in terms of intellectually or religiously, falls for not sexually, at least I don't think so. Um, and yeah, it sounds um, interesting. I mean, I'm not one who is uh, that uh, interested in religion in books. Uh, it's just not my thing, but if it's done well, I mean, one of my favorite sci-fi books, <laughs> The Sparrow, is all about religion. So what am I talking? Anyway, Flannery O'Connor is the new author Spotlight, and Wise Blood, her debut novel, will be the first book that I read for this project. Uh, next up is Maggie O'Farrell's uh, The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox, first published in 2006. Um, Maggie Farrell is an Irish author, and... I really want to love her. <laughs> I want to find a book by her that I really love because I think she's such an intriguing author. I read I Am, I Am, I Am, her nonfiction account about 13 brushes, brushes with Death, which I quite liked but didn't love. Um, next book uh, I read by her was Hamnet, um, the uh, Women's Prize winner of last year, and it that was just not my thing really. Um, but I'm not giving up. No, 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 not giving up. So I'm trying this one, one of her earlier books, um, and it sounded intriguing. We have uh, the 1930s. Esme is uh, the headstrong uh, uh, daughter of the family. Um, and then years and years later, um, uh, we move to Iris, um, and she receives a letter that uh, her great aunt Esme is in a psychiatric unit. And then the story takes off from there. That that sounded like an interesting premise. And like I said, I wanted to try another uh, Maggie O'Farrell, and I'm sure I will love this one. And this will the beginning will be the beginning of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> anyway, let's just hope. Um, next up, another nonfiction, and that is Christina Thompson. Come on shore, and we will kill and eat you all. Isn't that the most fantastic title? a memoir published in 2008. Um, Christina Thompson um, was born in Switzerland, um, lived in Australia for quite a bit, um, and now lives in Boston. She's married to a New Zealander, a Maori man, and this is the account of her travels uh, in New Zealand and Australia, how they met, but it's also the story of these uh, two cultures meeting um, <clears throat> excuse me, 300 years earlier when the first Europeans came to New Zealand. It was actually a Dutch guy called Tasman. Anyway, I, if you follow my channel, you know that her subsequent book, Christina Thompson's subsequent book about uh, Polynesia, Sea People, uh, which she published, um, I think, a year or two ago, I absolutely loved. I think it was, it's a fantastic book. And when I saw that she had published a memoir earlier, I, of course, bought it because, you know, reasons. 
And the last book um, uh, for this book haul, at least, is a book that uh, is a new release, and that is Sarah Winman's Still Life, uh, which was published a couple of months ago, I think two months ago. Um, and I featured this book in my mid-year freakout, mid-year book freakout tag video, one of the books that has been uh, published, a new release that has been published that I want to read but haven't gotten to yet. Um, Sarah Winman, um, uh, I really, really loved her previous book, the only other book that I read by her, Tin Man, about um, a sort of triangle relationship between uh, two men and a, and a woman, and I thought it was heartbreaking and beautiful. Um, and this one is historical fiction, um, which is often a hit and miss with me, um, as you might know. Uh, it's set in 1944 in Tuscany, and you have a British soldier um, uh, and a, a, an art historian, but also maybe a spy, and they meet, and then plot takes off from there. Um, I just uh, read this plot summary for you, <laughs> actually for the mid-year book freakout tag, to, uh, so that I'd be able to tell you at least something because I I couldn't care less. It was just I saw Sarah Winman, and I remember Tin Man, and I wanted to have her new book no matter what. And like the first one I showed you, Olivia Langs, everybody, this one is heavy, so I'm gonna put it down. Anyway, so this was my July kind of slash birthday book haul. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.